Hi everyone. So let's talk about the moon hoaxers. Yeah, I'm talking about the people who refuse to accept that humans went to the moon. Okay, so what's so crazy about that? Isn't the burden of proof on those who say that humans have been there? Well, actually both sides are making claims, but what the hell, you want evidence? Okay. We have records of this event from an independent contemporary source, the Russians. They had every reason to deny knowledge of this event, or call bullshit even, and yet they confirmed that it happened. We know that the Russians tracked the spacecraft and listened in on the transmissions, just like countless people all over the world. So the conspirators were able to fake a bunch of transmissions. All it takes is to relay the astronauts' lines from the studio to some satellite in space and then back to Earth. The problem with that is a large spacecraft, large enough to house the astronauts, was actually observed going to the moon and back, and that was the source of the transmissions. Ooh, okay, so it was a big ship and it actually went to the moon. Seriously, how does that prove anyone was aboard? They could still use it to relay signals. Rocks and soil samples were brought back from the moon. Rocks? Listen to yourself. How could you possibly know that those rocks come from the moon? Some scientist working for NASA said so. And how could anyone tell there are no other moon rocks to use as reference? In case you didn't realize this, the rocks haven't just been analyzed by NASA, but by scientists all over the world. Rocks on Earth are exposed to the elements here on Earth, and that actually goes for meteorites as well. On Earth, rocks aren't bombarded by micrometeorites. They're not exposed to cosmic radiation to nearly the same extent, and they interact both chemically and mechanically with the atmosphere and with water. To assume that a trained geologist couldn't tell whether a rock is from the moon or from Earth is just absurd. Plus, there are other moon rocks to use as reference. The Russians sent probes to bring back a few hundred grams of moon rock. Look, there's a complete consensus among scientists that the rocks in question did come from the moon. Okay, look, you just explained how they got the moon rocks. Probes, we're done. No, the sheer amount of rock samples brought back by the Apollo missions, hundreds of kilos, make a very good case for those being manned missions. Using robots or remote controlled vehicles to gather all the rock samples would actually require far more advanced technology than sending humans. You're basically acknowledging that NASA had the technology to send humans, but faked it anyway. That's just too stupid to be taken seriously. It means that the contractors who built everything had to be in on it, or they'd be building the wrong stuff. This means upwards of half a million people had to know it was all fake. Why add the completely unnecessary risk of having just one of all of those people talk? I'm sorry, that's... No, I can't take that seriously at all. We're done. Humans went to the moon. But... Uh, no, no... It was all done in a studio! You, you didn't even let me get to the fun part! The shadows and the multiple light sources and all that! I can grant you that all the footage is fake just for the hell of it. It doesn't matter. The Footage is part of the historical documentation, sure, but it's the part that needs confirmation. The confirmation comes from the Russians, and they accepted that the moon landings were real before they could have seen the footage. As far as I'm concerned, it could be footage of a reenactment of an actual historical event. But why fake the footage if they really went? Are you seriously gonna tell me someone forgot to pack the camera? I'm not saying they did fake it, you idiot. I'm saying... Ugh. Okay, let's do this. Every single claim about these photos and videos being fake has been refuted. My point is, it doesn't matter. Look, you can find complete debunkings on Clavius.org, a site dedicated to crushing this conspiracy theory. I'm not gonna go over this picture by picture. Instead, let's just say that it's all about expectations. If the photo doesn't meet the hoaxer's expectations, they say it's fake, but their expectations are hardly realistic. 
They assume that the surface of the moon is flat, for example. It's not. A shadow being cast on a sloped surface won't look the same as a shadow cast on a flat surface. They assume there's only one light source, the sun, when in fact sunlight reflected off the surface of the moon will act as an additional light source. That's why objects in shadows can still be illuminated. They assume that stars should be visible in the photos, but the cameras were set to take pictures in very bright light, so of course the stars won't appear on the photos, they're too faint. Other problems have to do with the lack of atmosphere. Hoaxers expect there to be a larger disturbance in the soil under the lander, for example. This is because on Earth, gas expelled from a rocket will displace air, which will displace more air, and so on. This means that a rocket fired in vacuum will affect a much smaller area. Closely related is the claim that there should be dust on the lander's footpads. Why? Dust blown away will fall down on a parabolic trajectory. There is no air. There's no wind. There's no way there could be any turbulence. A dust cloud in vacuum won't behave the way hoaxers expect it to. So if there's no wind, why is the flag waving? Because it's being manipulated by the guy holding it. There's still inertia in space. Again, the expectations are wrong, so of course the footage doesn't meet the expectations. This doesn't mean it's fake, it just means you're plain ignorant. Okay, okay, I see I'm talking to a brick wall here. It doesn't matter. Look, it's impossible to survive a trip to the moon, so it must be fake. The radiation in space is lethal. That's one hell of an oversimplification. Once again, we're talking about bad expectations. Radiation is bad, there's radiation in space, oh, I guess that means you die if you go into space. No physicist believes this. The only way the Apollo astronauts could have died from radiation poisoning is if there had been a major, and note the word major, solar event while they were outside Earth's magnetic field. These events can be predicted in advance. Hoaxers like to mention the Van Allen belts, which surround the Earth like a giant donut. Yes, there's lethal particle radiation there, but first of all, the trajectory used took the astronauts through the outer edges of the belts. And this wasn't even necessary, because the particle radiation won't penetrate the hull of the spacecraft anyway. Don't confuse high-frequency electromagnetic radiation like gamma rays which you'd need meters of lead to block out, with particle radiation that won't even penetrate a thin sheet of metal. Hell, alpha rays won't even penetrate human skin. Well, if all these scientists say that, that pretty much proves they're in on it, doesn't it? Sure. If science debunks the conspiracy, then... Every scientist and every science teacher, everyone who's ever taken a university course has to be part of the conspiracy. Because it can't possibly be that you, the conspiracy theorist, are wrong. It can't possibly be that the scientifically illiterate and in many cases probably intentionally dishonest people who make money selling books about this shit are providing you with false information. The only logical conclusion you can draw is that science itself is a huge conspiracy, and that's the very reason I decided to address conspiracy theories in a series about pseudoscience to begin with. That's the final conspiracy theory I will address, hopefully. And that's what's coming up next time. See you then.